<laughs> That's my line. You know, I could resist. I could resist. <laughs> That's my line. Yeah. So, on your channel, you ask a lot of people questions and you can learn about them. I want to ask you some questions. I want to flip, I want to flip the tables around because that's what <laughs> I do. That's what I do. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, David. We had a fantastic evening. I hope everyone learned a little bit about my friend David. Time to sign off. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, you got some questions for me. Yeah, what are they? Yeah. All right, so we're going we're gonna to turn off the modesty over here. What do you think is your biggest strength as a musician? Uh, vocals. Uh, I know how to punch it. Um, like, uh, I was challenged to do Robert Plant, and I was able to do Robert Plant. Um, Dazed and Confused with the Thirst, for example, that was always a blast. Um, and, um, I continued doing things like Chris Cornell, um, or, um, um, Lane Staley, and, um, Yeah, so I think vocals would be my forte. That's like my strongest suit. Um, but then again, just vocals is one thing. Playing vocals on a guitar at the same time, and to do that as a one-man show, could be considered a package. So that I can do. Uh, and if I was to I choose... I how challenging that is. When I talk to a lot of musicians, they, like, it's, that's a hard skill. I don't sing myself. Never ever sung in my life, so I can't. I I don't know the struggles, and I talk like my uh, like I talk to my bassist, and he tells me all the time like how hard it is to sing and play at the same time. Yeah, it it it's it, it, you get into a whole body groove. There's no other real way of doing it. Um, otherwise, it just sounds crappy. Um, yeah. and practice, of course, right? Um, playing and singing simple songs at an early age, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I think was the very first song I was able to sing and play at the same time. So that kind of just snowballed from there. The fact that a lot of songs are four chord wonders um, also kind of helps. So there's that. Um, and you do it enough where you just get comfortable with it and start applying your own particular style to a song. Um, and uh, acoustic guitar would have to be the best for me. Uh, that's the most, I've, the longest I've been playing. Um, and then bass, and then electric guitar. I developed my electric guitar last, and my tone is still questionable. Interesting. So, on the flip side, if you can improve or get good at any other element slash aspect of being a musician. Sorry, that last drop part dropped off. If there was anything else that I can improve as a musician. If there was any element of your musical abilities that you can improve, what would that be? Um, Self-marketing, I think, is a big one now. Because we've got the technology to be able to do everything on our own. To be able to record, to be able to produce and manage and promote. So I would like to get slick at that. Um, but more, more, but more about the music part. The music? Oh, then, well, if it isn't for like the engineering recording, because that's also an important, very important aspect. Uh, I would have to say drums. Um, I love playing drums, percussions. Um, I would like to be able to do the songs that I want to do, but I also want to accompany myself with the drums because I have so many ideas of how songs I want to go, how they want, how they're to be constructed and how they're to be expressed. But when you're relying on someone else or some people relying on the computer, then to have to program that is just, is, is a pain in the butt or to have to rely on someone else to, it's, it's just another wheel on the vehicle. So if I can just sit behind a kit, because I can, you know, drop less than a grand for a decent kit, and then to be able to just knock the crap out of it, light it on fire, like, oh, that would be really fulfilling. Also, it's good exercise. 
Like, I love playing the drums on my own and being experimental, but to then apply that to my own music, I think that would be really fun. What did you like most about being in the drum circles? Oh, the drum circles! Ah, the, the scene itself was really groovy. Um, uh, I could dress up and do anything I want. I could play any kind of thing that I want. There was no expectations. There was appreciation for me showing up. So there was acceptance, un unconditional acceptance. There was no like attitude like, oh, here's so-and-so. Um, and everyone was having a good time. It was a party every single time. Uh, there was like no negativity. Uh, if people wanted to leave, they left. If uh, 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 people that were not part of the group wanted to come in and participate, then it was completely open. It was such a fun scene. It's really, really good. Um, actually, I would love to go to Vancouver and check out the drum scene over there uh, come spring and sum summer next year. That would be fun. All right. If you can go back to your younger self and give you one piece of advice related to music and being a musician, what would that be? Uh, well... I learned that no matter where I went, whether it was cruise ships or contracts out west or something, that I would always have to have a guitar. And I learned that a little bit on the late side. Um, I would be twiddling my thumbs off contract, like um, waiting for the next shift, not knowing what to do with myself because I'm in the middle of nowhere Saskatchewan or Manitoba or Alberta or something. So if I had known to... Wherever I go, I need a guitar with me to to do that. And, you know, just purchase a beater for like a hundred bucks or something and give it to someone uh, at the end of it. Then I would have done that. I learned that I music, I, like, I need music. I need to play it. I need to express it, even if it's just uh, um, on my iPhone or tablet and um, pressing record for a voice recorder. I still have stuff from 2017. I've got over a thousand little snippets of me playing uh, on different contracts um, and uh, purchasing a guitar on, where was it, the US Virgin Islands because I'm just like fucking going crazy on the cruise ship, I need a guitar. So yeah, I would uh, have told myself a long time ago, wherever you go, bring a guitar with you. What was your most memorable experience or most memorable performance? Ooh, most memorable performance. Ah, uh, I've got lots of memories. Uh, it's hard to rank them. The most... Um... Oh, jeez. And, and and they're so various too. Uh, that's kind of hard. I, I really get a kick out of getting audience reaction and when people get up and start dancing to what we're doing that was always a kicker um, um, well, that, that, that. there's that magic it's it's kind of hard to, to put a pin on it um, The, the most uh, maybe maybe and I'm really glad I did this I was a nursing officer on a carnival cruise ship and I hung out with the musicians of course I had to and they appreciated me because I was able to give them vitamin C and cough drops and fisherman's friend they loved I really helped them out so that was cool um, one of them was like Adrian you want to play guitar for a bit I'm like heck yeah so <laughs> so 
I maybe one of uh, the the best experience I had was uh, playing guitar on a cruise ship for myself uh, while everyone's just milling about, kind of like a mall, you know, just people just standing yeah. around. So um, I played um, oh geez, uh, No Rain um, by Blind Melon. Blind Melon. Yeah, because that's always a blast. And as it turns out, the captain was a few uh, tiers above me and he recorded me <laughs> so I got an overhead page saying Adrian to the med bay Adrian to the med bay and I'm like oh okay I gotta go uh, as I went down there and then later on during the daytime uh, during my shift the captain comes down and he says hello to everyone talks to the doctor and he shows me playing guitar and he said hey good job <laughs> and I'm like Holy fuck! <laughs> Holy shit! The captain caught me playing guitar where I'm supposed to be at work because my shift just started. So that was a little embarrassing, but uh, yeah, Captain Carlo, um, he he uh, caught me red-handed, but he appreciated it. So that was really cool. Yeah, I'd have to say maybe that was the best. You've asked me about my family. Really begs the question: Is the ability to pick up music truly something that's imprinted at the time of your birth? Is it part of your DNA, or is it just is it one of those things that, like, if you work really hard at, then yeah, anybody can become a musician? Oh, um, that's an interesting question. It's like nature or, versus nurture. Is it just exposure? Like, well. Uh, I think it's nature and nurture. You need that experience when you're growing up to be able to, you know, uh, inculcate and for you to give you the opportunity to express what you may have as a talent that's inborn. Um, so, I, like, uh, we all have the capacity to make noise and to listen and to participate. Whether or not that is fostered as a kid is really up to the environment. Um, and yet, I've met some people that have got no chance in hell for making, like, good tunes. Uh, uh, they can't sing, or their timing is really, really poor, and it's like, oh, God, like, ah, uh, you're, you're hopeless. Um, but that's also kind of being judgy. The important thing is that they're having a good time, obviously, and that they're getting something from it. So even if you can't really sing, it's... If you sing in the shower, then at least you're, you know, singing and it, it feels good. Uh, or singing in the car or uh, you're able to express yourself and, and get something from the music that's around you. Um, but the fact that your family is musical and my family is musical and we have succeeded as musicians and are thriving, um, I think that speaks volumes, pardon the pun. Um, about the ability, having that innate um, ability to be a musician, uh, to be able to express yourself and uh, use the tools that are at hand. Take advantage of the things that are brought in front of you, your environment, um, your friends, uh, the music that's around you to be able to reproduce and learn from and then create your own. Who's a really underrated musician? Uh, underrated musician. Not necessarily the best or the greatest or your favorite, but just really like, wow, this person really good. And they don't get the credit or the fame that they should. Oh, man. Uh, Brian Eno is really, really good. And a lot of people are just like, isn't he the guy that does all those ambient noise and stuff? But yeah, I really like Brian Eno. To, to clear out my head from like other kinds of music and just put me into a different zone completely, I think Brian Eno is good. But he is really appreciated by different kinds of musicians, so he, he is already, you know, rich and famous and stuff. Um, There is the lead singer from... Um, um, 
Oh, jeez. Big Thief? She is a poet. Her lyrics are fantastic, but she is becoming more and more famous and is coming up more and more. Uh, I, something that I'm starting to appreciate is uh, the lyricism that goes behind a song. So you'll have someone like Rob Halford or um, Ozzy Osbourne who come up with these cliche lyrics and you're just like, oh god, anyone could write this. But then you hear someone like Gordy Downey from Tragically Hip and he writes poetry. He puts, he strings together words that no one's ever strung together before. So if you hear the song Not, N-O-T, by Big Thief, it's a wonderful song. It's, it's beautiful. Um, and they're becoming more and more famous, uh, but it's taken them a long time because they used to be just bar bands that would travel through Europe and whatnot, uh, if you're lucky enough to see them live. Um, who, who else? Uh, I'm trying to keep my eyes, uh, my ears open. Um, who's up and coming? I'd have to say Wolfgang Van Halen, the son of Eddie Van Halen. Um, he has taken a lot of his family's uh, abilities and he's now come up with his own album called Mammoth which I discovered a couple of months ago actually no the beginning of summer and I'm like holy shit every song is a freaking hit who is this um, WVH and why does it look like Van Halen letters it turns out it's his son and he plays all the instruments uh, he had I guess enough money and backing to be able to create his own stuff but he's not really known yet um, well, what's interesting is that he's actually had, like, because like, when people go to his concerts, they're all begging for him to play Van Halen covers. And I remember <laughs> seeing a tweet, it was either in a tweet or in an interview, like, guys, I do not play Panama on my show. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's kind of hard, uh, being in his dad's shadow. Uh, Sadly, it's time to go, so thank you very much for uh, coming all the way from Toronto here by uh, the magic of the internet to uh, participate with uh, this, my final uh, installment of season number two. Um, and uh, thank you very much for unexpectedly asking me some questions about my musicianship. Um, I, I, I really enjoy having the chance to be able to do some reflection, and that's one of the big reasons why I've even started doing this sort of thing, almost kind of like a video journal. And, uh, and paying homage to all those important people in my life that have helped um, uh, my musicianship. So again, thank you very much for participating. And also as an homage to you that you, know, you, were, you were cool at some point in your life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> so you can play these videos back when you're in your 70s. That's right. Yeah, uh, something to look forward to. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this again. So, again, thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you again. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, goodbye.